How's it going everybody? It is Noobski94 and welcome to my champion dissection series. Now for those of you that have already seen one of my episodes, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. It's going to skip this intro for you guys. But for those of you that are new and haven't seen one of my episodes yet, I'm going to be explaining to you guys exactly what these videos are about. Now I'm sure most of you guys understand that when you're playing against a champion you have never personally played before, you have a significant disadvantage in fighting them because you don't know their moves, you don't know what they're capable of doing. And I'm also sure most of you guys don't have enough IP or time to go purchase champions you aren't interested in playing for the sake of understanding what it is, what they're capable of doing, and how you could be them. I made this series to teach you guys the entirety of champions, not just their abilities, but the synergy that their abilities have, exactly how they play, what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, how you can counter a champion, and how you could play with a champion that you don't understand or you never played before to your maximum potential. So without further ado, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about Fizz. Fizz is a very powerful mid lane AP assassin. He has two moves in his kit that give him significant mobility and he also is very powerful in burst capability. He has very low defense, uh, very susceptible to CCing and he also has very low sustained damage. After he deals his complete rotation on you, he doesn't have much more damage to follow up with besides his auto attacks. Fizz is amazing at snowballing, especially early game. He has substantial damage. He's able to annihilate champions a lot of times he can bring a lot of champions from 100% health to zero depending on his build and depending on how successfully he performs his rotation. Having said that, he is a melee AP assassin, which means when he is farming in lane and trying to collect CS, he is very, very susceptible to being bursted himself and susceptible to consistent poking damage. Fizz's moves are also very expensive in mana, which makes it very hard for him to rotate on you without burning most of his mana. So first I'm going to explain all of his abilities to you guys, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the synergy these abilities have and where his strengths and weaknesses are. Then I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys exactly how he team fights and how you guys could play him slash counter him most effectively. So first we're going to take a look at Fizz's moves. So taking a look at his passive and nimble fighter, Fizz's dexterity allows him to move through units and takes four less damage from basic attacks. This means he has no unit collision. He could stand in his own minions or walk through your minions and auto attack you and go ahead and walk through the minions again. He doesn't need to worry about unit collision at all which makes him very very mobile. It also allows him to sit in his own minion pool to protect him from skill shots that would normally stop at the first enemy target hit. The fourless damage from basic attacks allows him to pass your minion wave, auto attack you, and reduce the amount of damage that your minions will actually do to him when he does a trade on you. It also is effective against anybody that is doing basic attack poke damage. Next we have Fizz's Q Urchin Strike, which is his primary gap closer and also works very well as a getaway move. Fizz dashes through his target, dealing normal attack damage plus X amount of magical damage. The spell damage applies on hit effects. Now you can see here that Urchin Strike has an actually a very decent range. If he does hit a target at max range, he will dash and hit the target. The only target he'll hit is the one that he applies it to. Fizz will always dash the entire distance of this move, which means if you are melee range from him and he uses this move, he'll travel right through you until he hits the very edge of this move's radius. This maximizes the effectiveness of this move's mobility, making it a great escape move. Next we have Fizz's W, which is Sea Stone Trident. This is where most of Fizz's sustain and poke damage is going to come from. Passively, Fizz's attacks red his enemy, dealing X amount of magical damage plus 4% of the target's missing health over 3 seconds. Activating this move will give Fizz a buff for 6 seconds, making his attacks deal X amount of magic damage on hit. Now you can clearly see that this is a very nice move for poking people. One auto attack will allow you to deal a bunch of damage over 3 seconds. If a champion is at very low health and manages to flash away from you, you could definitely bet that this move will actually kill the champion, for it is going to deal additional magic damage based off of the target's missing health. Next we have Fizz's E, which is Playful Trickster. Now this is Fizz's primary mobility move. Skilled Fizz players will most typically use this move as a getaway, but it is also a very effective gap closer. Fizz hops towards your cursor onto his spear, becoming untargetable, and then slamming the ground dealing X amount of magic damage to nearby enemies, and slowing them by 40% for 2 seconds. Reactivating this ability while Fizz is on top of his spear causes Fizz to jump again towards your cursor, dealing X amount of magic damage in a smaller area instead of slamming the ground. So this move does a tremendous amount of AoE magic damage, it also applies slow, but reactivating this ability will get rid of its slow, decrease its AoE damage radius, in exchange for increased mobility. Now when Fizz uses this ability and he's up on the spear, he's completely immune to everything, all type of damage, all type of CC, just as if you use Zonia's Hourglass. Skilled Fizz players will only use this ability as a getaway, unless they 
are confident that they can completely kill you with his rotation. This move also allows Fizz to jump over many walls of the game, making him extremely mobile. This move will also allow Fizz to evade fatal alts such as Caitlyn alts or Karthus alts. This move is very expensive in mana and also has a very long cooldown, which is why it's typically only ever used as a getaway or used in his burst rotation if Fizz uses his complete rotation to take out a target. Lastly, Fizz's ultimate is Chum the Waters. Fizz releases a magical fish towards a location that attaches to an enemy champion that gets near it. The fish slows movement by 50%, increases magical damage by Fizz to the target by 20% for 6 seconds. This 20% increased damage does not affect Chum the Waters itself. After 1.5 seconds, a shark erupts from the ground, knocking up the target and knocking other enemies aside, dealing X amount of magic damage and slowing them by 50% for 1.5 seconds. Now this move is a slow moving skill shot that will only stick on enemy champions. If this move misses a champion, a champion can walk over it on the ground and it will apply to the champion. If this move erupts without being attached to a champion, it will simply do its magic damage to any minions over top of it. Skilled Fizz players will almost only ever engage on you and try to poke you if they see that you have one or more offensive moves on cooldown. Fizz is very susceptible to pokes because he has very low natural defense and he is also a melee AP assassin. Trading with Fizz shouldn't be hard, but if Fizz ends up getting you low enough to the point where his rotation can kill you, this is where he's going to excel. You can never let Fizz drop you below the point where he can kill you. Champions with high mobility such as LeBlanc are the most effective against playing Fizz, for they are able to avoid his complete rotation if he does manage to land a Chum the Waters on you. The mobility is also going to give you the upper hand in dodging this move. Landing Chum the Waters on Fizz's enemy target is critical to bursting the champion down. If Fizz starts from gold from not being able to get kills or assists or being able to farm his lane, he will eventually fall off very hard and become almost useless in mid to late game team fights. Fizz's rotation will typically look like this. He will first cast Chum the Waters. If it lands in you, he'll follow up with a playful trickster. The movement slow that Chum the Water has will allow him to land a perfect playful trickster on you. Fizz will then use Sea Stone Trident and continuously auto attack you. He will simply walk with your champion and auto attack you as long as he feels that he is safe to do so. If you use something like Flash or another mobility move to get away from him, he will use Urchin Strike to catch up to you. He will then continuously auto attack you with Sea Stone Trident until you are dead. The best way to counter this from happening is to prevent yourself from dropping low enough in health for Fizz to be able to kill you in his single rotation. An alternative way to prevent this from happening is from dodging Chum the Waters. This is where most of Fizz's damage comes from. Chum the Waters in itself has a really amazing slow a large amount of magical damage and it also increases the damage done by all of Fizz's other abilities by an additional 20% for 6 seconds after it hits you. This gives Fizz plenty of time to use his complete rotation on you and hit you with a lot of auto attacks. Skilled Fizz players will play mind game on their enemy laners, allowing themselves to fall very low on health, which will make their enemy laner very greedy and perform silly moves to try and kill him. This will give Fizz the ability to land an easy chum the waters and follow up with an entire rotation which will instantly kill you. Fizz's mobility is where his defense lies. If Playful Trickster and Urchin Strike is on cooldown, you know that you could sit on Fizz. If Fizz engages on you with both of these moves and he's unable to bring you lower than 30% health, there is a very good chance that you can beat him if you have sustained damage. Fizz's primary skill comes from his understanding on what he's capable of doing to his enemy target. If Fizz understands that he can kill you, he will kill you. If Fizz understands he won't, he won't attempt it. If Fizz thinks he can kill you but can't, this is where you will pick up the kill. Now, if you prevent Fizz from ever being able to kill you and prevent him from farming, this will starve Fizz. Fizz has next to no utility abilities. He is highly reliant on items. He needs items to be able to burst targets. If Fizz is unable to burst high priority targets, he is completely useless to the team. Building defense such as health and magic resistance is also an awesome way to counter Fizz. This will reduce the window of opportunity he has to deal significant amount of damage to you in his burst rotation. I recommend playing ranged champions with good poke or high mobility in order to counter Fizz successfully in lane. If you are not playing a champion that can counter him with mobility or pokes, then I highly recommend building a little bit more defensively and play farm style rather than trading damage and fighting Fizz. If Fizz gets early game kills or a lot of CS, he is a high threat to your team. He will typically then begin to roam to top or bottom lane and deal a massive amount of burst damage to your other lanes. In mid and late game team fights, the best way to counter Fizz is by having a strong front line or a very aware support. If Fizz is able to land an ultimate on one of your softer targets such as your ADC or your AP mid, 
he is able to completely annihilate this target instantly. By having your support play defensively and using his abilities to CC Fizz during his rotation and prevent Fizz from actually landing his ultimate on high priority targets will render Fizz completely useless and make it very hard for the enemy team to win. Thanks a lot for watching my champion dissection on Fizz guys. I hope you have a very well understanding on how you can counter Fizz in lane and in team fight scenarios. If you did like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you do want to see more World of Warcraft or League of Legends content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you on my next video.